My mother's aunt, she'll be 100 years old today. And uh, man, it's just a blessing. You know, the last time I, I did see her, she was there at the senior living place in Bedford. We had been going. And she was so excited she could walk around, still cook, and all that. It's just been just a few months, but she took a turn a couple of weeks ago. We didn't know if we were going to be able to celebrate this thing, but the Lord has spared us. Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning, church. It's enough of y'all in here to make a noise. Amen. Amen. Do, do, does anyone know what forsake means? Forsaken kind of like don't forget, right? Ever forget, right? Pay attention to these scriptures here. And if anybody tells you that they don't have to go to church, I'm going to send you to these scriptures and you, know, you write them down. It's coming out of the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 22 through 26, from the New King James Version. Let us draw near with a true heart and full assurance of faith having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. Let us hold fast the confessions of our hope without wavering, for he who promised is faithful. And let us consider one another in order to stir up love and good works. Now pay attention to this scripture. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, but exhorting one another, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. Read that again. Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves, assembly of ourselves together, as is the manner of some, means some have already forgotten. Verse 26, for if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins. Jesus was the last sacrifice. Amen. Just read you from the book of Hebrews, chapter 10, verses 22 to 26, from the New King James Version. Blessed are the readers and hearers of his word. Amen. Good morning, church. Good morning, church. Please bow your heads. Let's pray. Let Jesus lead us all the way. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy holy name. Dear Lord, our gracious Father, here we are once again in your tabernacle to come to thank you for. You've been a mighty, awesome God. We thank you for watching over us as we slept in slumber last night. And we give a special thanks for choosing us to be among the living this morning. For so many lie down last night, didn't get a chance to get up this morning. So we want to thank you for that this morning. We want to thank you, our Heavenly Father, for the little things that you do for us, providing food on our table, giving us running water, raining to clean out the air so we have fresh air to breathe. We thank you for that this morning, our gracious Father. And then, Lord, our gracious Father, we come and thank you for the free gift that you forgive us. You give us the gift of forgiveness, so let us be wise and use that. And go to one another and ask for forgiveness if we're wrong someone. We thank you for the special gift that you give each and every one of us. We all got different gifts so we can assemble and, and form a church. We thank you for that this morning. And we thank you, our Heavenly Father, for eternal life. For we know you give us the gift of eternal life if we just choose to follow Jesus. And most importantly, our Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. For we rely with the Holy Spirit that you sealed us so the devil can't touch us this morning. We, con we continue to thank you for letting the Holy Spirit lead and guide and direct us. He he keep us in your word, for we rely on your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our paths. And we need that light so we can see how to go, our Heavenly Father. And then get our Heavenly Father to come this morning. As a people openly confessed in all our sins. For you know and we know we haven't been a perfect people this morning. So we ask him to please forgive us. Dust us off and start us anew this morning, my gracious Father. Now, now, Lord, I hate you, Father. We ask that you would continue to bless all the auxiliaries of this church. Continue to bless the, greet the greeters and the ushers. We ask that you bless our choir when they sing. They'll be lifting up their voice to you this morning. 
continue to have mercy on our deacon board and watch over our associate pastors and continue to watch over and bless and guide the angel of this church, him and his family, and keep him away from hurt, harm, and danger as we move forward as a church and as a people this morning. And then, Lord, help us to remember that we are your arms and we are your legs. Send us out to the convalescent homes and the jails and the prison. Lord. Let them know that you set high, but you look low. And you're God and you're God all by yourself. And help us to remember that, to let the people know we are the light. We are the light. We are not to conform to the world. We are to go out to let the word conform to us. And then, Lord, our gracious Father, as we prepare to receive a word from on high this morning, we ask that you will bless the man who's standing in John's shoes this morning. We ask that you will let him be bold and brave and bring the word without compromise this morning. And we ask that you would clean up our hearts and our minds that we might receive the word and leave here this morning a little better than which we came. We ask these things as we do with all things. In Jesus' name, amen, amen. and amen. amen. Can everyone please stand?
Amen. Thank y'all for helping us our devotion. We'll now have our announcements. Good morning and welcome to Greater Community Missionary Baptist Church where Reverend Kendi Jones is our pastor. Not perfection, just forgiven. Do we have any visitors? All right, thank you. Well, one of our uh, ushers will give you a card. We hope something is said or done that will make you want to come back again, even in the rain. All right. Uh, our BI fall semester and courses are in progress. We have relationships, wisdom covering Proverbs, experiencing God, traditional Sunday school, and youth classes for all ages. Uh, flu shots, they'll be given today at 1245 for those who signed up. Uh, the wellness ministry and Walgreens uh, will be doing that. So again, that's after our second service today at 1245. Our fall festival is coming up October 31st from 6 to 9. We need candy, prizes, volunteers for games. Please see Brother, uh, Brother Arrington Clayton or any of the youth member department, anybody in the youth member. Uh, let me just tell you this. Uh, the women's ministry put a challenge to the men to see if they could have more men out there than we have women out there. Now, we're just going to see what happens this year because, you know, normally we always have more women. But we're just going to see because the men have accepted the challenge. So we're not going to counter anything, but pictures will be taken. And they won't be photoshopped. So just let you all know, the men are going to show up. We just need to make sure we show up. Uh, we have anywhere from 200 to 250 kids sometimes. So we need to make sure we're out there and that we can control the crowd and that the crowd has a good time because this is something that we do not only for our children but for our community. So let's make sure we come out there. Oh, we got some new games, y'all. I'm so excited. Y'all might see me playing some of them games. But oh, we got some new games. I think the kids are going to be excited. So come out and let's let the men show us how a challenge is met and beat. So that's all I'm going to say about that. Okay, don't forget uh, to receive notifications on upcoming events and programs. Please text GC126, your name, and 313131. To visit our website, you can go to that long name that's in there. Y'all know what it is. Or you can uh, also look at us on Ustream, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram pages. Please remember to turn off your phones and they're walking or talking. Uh, the prayer list. To have a name lifted up in prayer, you can call uh, our church phone or you can click on the church website for prayer requests. Let's pray for Brother Marquis Blaylock, Sister Rosie Brown, Sister Dorothy Nobles, Sister Bernice Jenkins, Sister Doris Blair, Sister Geraldine Thompson, Sister Julia Davis, Brother Leon and his brother, Gloria Reed, Brother Lee and Sister Linda Knox, our inspiring thoughts. Christ is beside me, before me, behind me, within me, and above me. Amen. Word of power. For the grace of God that brings salvation has appeared to all men. Thank you, and you're now in the hands of the pulpit. Oh, I forgot to use it. I'm sorry.
Good morning to each one of you. What a joy it is to be once again in the house of the Lord. And uh, let's just praise the Lord. That's, uh, what, that's, I think that's a great idea. That's, <laughs> since that's why we're here. Because he is worthy, isn't it? And he proves it day after day. And uh, so, so, what, and so what, a, what a privilege it is to be able to praise him. Uh, it, doesn't earn, it, it doesn't add anything to him. But it's all true, so uh, so we thank him for the opportunity, and um, I believe we're going to do the responsive reading. Yes, would you please stand for the responsive reading? <laughs> Wasn't sure. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> Gorgon Grace, and that's a that's a worthy thing. <clears throat> Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. Whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And besides this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge. And to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness. And to godliness brotherly For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that, these sh that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he that lacketh these things is blind, and cannot see them fall off, and has blind, and he heard from the old sins. Wherefore the rather, brethren, Give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. Ye therefore, beloved, seeing ye know these things before, beware lest ye also being led away with the error of the wicked, fall from your own steadfastness altogether. But grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Church, say amen. To all of our visitors, we're happy you took time out to share with us on this Lord today. We hope and pray that something will be said in Scripture, Psalm, Prayer, Sermon, to make this a better day for you. Uh, just a couple of observations. Um, the number one, uh, today at 5 o'clock over at Lake Arlington uh, Baptist Church, is over in Green Oaks, they've got a, um, uh, a symposium uh, on a program on racism. Uh, bullying and violence and uh, it's one that we ought to go to I always look at it like this that um, you know we 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 push uh, people to recognize uh, their failings and their shortcomings and uh, most of who we're talking about is our white brothers and sisters so now if they come to term with the fact that they need to address this then we ought not to leave them out there hanging and so uh, that's the day at 5 o'clock I was talking to Pastor Herstrom on this week um, and uh, I told him I said you know the, um, just the fact that, that you're doing this see, it's one thing for me to talk about racism I said at my church I'm going to get an amen if you talk about it at your church you're liable to get fired and I said however if you got enough guts to step up in your pulpit and tell your people that 
y'all need to deal with it. You know, I'll come, I always say, our people will come over and help you. You know, hopefully we won't have to help you pack your bags, but we'll come over and help you. And so um, uh, it's at 5 o'clock, it's Lake Arlington, and, and we ought to go over there. And we ought to support what they're, they're trying to do. And then the other thing is, you know, <laughs> I hate to leave them by themselves. They get to talk about racism, come up with some crazy stuff. <laughs> you know, ain't got nothing to do with the realities of the world <laughs> that we live in. So um, that's, at, that's at 5 o'clock at uh, Lake Arlington. Let's go over there and, and support him in trying to do that. And actually, I was talking to the, um, the uh, uh, assistant pastor at um, the uh, church down there on Green Oaks. Um, it's um, um, the, the, the huge Baptist church down there. It's, uh, uh, on Green Oaks and Bowen. What is it? Rush Creek. Rush Creek Baptist Church. <laughs> and... Um, I was talking to him, and, and, and you know, he, he's, he said, just, we weren't even talking about it. He said to me, um, you know, Pastor, if, if we're going to deal with the racism in an effective way, it's going to take white men to do it. I said, Brother, I'm glad you said that. He said, and, and we need to. We need to. I said, yeah, you do. And I'll do everything I can to help you. But you're right. If we're going to change the culture, if we're going to change the dynamics, then, then it's, it's got to happen in the heads of white men. And, and that can happen. And we can make this community a better community. We can make this city, this state, and this nation a better nation if we're willing to look for it rightly at the shortcomings that we have. And we can be better. So uh, let's make a point of coming out to support them as they try to do, how to understand the realities and then uh, do the right thing. And, and then also um, voter registration. I know most of you in here vote, register to vote. It's not you that need this piece of paper. It's folks that you know and that are not registered to vote. And, and do what you can to help them. You can give them the church phone number. Uh, we've got information we can give them right off the bat and that, that they can use to get registered to vote and, um, and where to go and get registered to vote. So all you got to do is just give them the church number and say, look, these folks will tell you, just call them and say, I, I need to get registered to vote. No, we'll do the rest. But we need uh, to get folks registered to vote so that they can exercise their civic duty and their Christian responsibility. It's incumbent upon all of us as Christians to not only live under the law, but to affect the laws by which we live. It's the right thing to do. Um, we've got our fall festival coming up, and we need help. We need your help to do that. And so um, we got some things that were in the program, bring candy and all, and, uh, and we need as much of it as we can get. There's going to be a, 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 a night out. It's uh, October the second. It's, it's uh, um, the uh, it's called the um, night out for churches across the Arlington uh, city, and um, so it's 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 where many of the churches come out and they they um, meet the the police. And the um, fire department comes. It's just a way of meeting the personnel, the people that serve and 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 and, and work for us in the city. And that's the, the second. And uh, Sister Lawrence Johnson is, is responsible for that. But just you know, they'll have uh, they'll bring the fire truck out, and 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 there'll be some um, you know meeting these folks, and there'll be some treats and that kind of stuff. Uh, there'll be some games for the kids, but uh, that's on the second, and 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 we want to do that. Uh, most most all of the churches, First Baptist, First United Methodist, uh, Cornerstone, and and they called and asked if we would do it, if we would host uh, a night out also. And I I told them yeah, it, 
sounded like a good thing to do, and we would we would do it also. And so they, the only thing they asked is that you know everyone would come. And so uh, on that night, you know, it's around seven o'clock, and just meet and greet um, you know the folks that we get to, we get to know them. They get to to know us. You know, I called over to the station um, this week, and I was talking to uh, one of the guys I need to talk to, one of the sergeants on the station, and and, and end up getting the the young police officer that comes here almost every Christmas, every Christmas Eve services. We, he's he's here sitting in the back, and um, we got talking. I like never got him off the phone. I mean, but. You know, he, he enjoyed talking. I enjoyed talking to him. He got moved down to to South Arlington, and he just telling me how he he enjoyed uh, being here on on Christmas Eve, and and how he would be over at the station, and uh, about six thirty he'd slip out, and they know where he was going, and um, so they it's just a matter of getting to know them, and and uh, and them getting to know us. Uh, that's what the the Arlington night out is, and so um, that's on the second at seven o'clock. And uh, you can talk to Lawrence; she can give you all the details about it. Also, um, a Bible Institute that started. We've got really great classes, uh, Proverbs. You know, those of you have you ever actually studied the Book of Proverbs? Raise your hand. You've actually. Done a study through all 31 chapters of the book of Proverbs. Raise your hand. That's what I thought. It's a great book that talks about the wisdom of the ages and the wisdom of God. And, and the thing about Proverbs, in Proverbs, when you look at it and, and you look at the writings of Proverbs and the, the influence, there is a lot of wisdom associated with African culture. There's in Proverbs. It's only after, you know, I started studying uh, myself, Deacon Cecil McDowell, Reverend Edmonds, uh, we're teaching class that, you know, we, we, we got into it and then we realized uh, because if you look at the timeline and if you look at the other cultural writings of that day and you look at the, the people that were flowing through Israel during that time, you see, I'm going to verbatim, a lot of the same saying that were being used in different sections and parts of Africa in which there were large numbers of people that were flowing through the boundaries of Israel. So a lot of what you see in Proverbs, it, it comes from us. And, and, and that was one of the neat things in, in studying the book. But it's a great book. It's a great book. And then we've got relationships. Um, I don't know what they're doing, but they they packing the house over there in that class. Talking about... Um, Relationships in the home, relationship with your children, relationship uh, with your significant others, relationship uh, on your job, relationship with God, relationship uh, within the church. They're, they're, I mean, it's a great class, and people are loving it. Um, so, I mean, it's, that's, it's a great class. And then we've got experience in God. And that's, that, that has, through the ages, in the last 10 years, I don't think there has been a, a more studied um, subject matter than uh, the, the book on experiencing God. And they've updated it. It just went through a major update here in the last couple of years. And so if you took it, if you took it five or six years ago, it's a different, it's a different book. And, and, and there's, a whole, there's a whole new dynamic added to it. And so it's, it's great. Uh, uh, Deacon Antonio Dixon, um, the director of Christian education, um, uh, Deacon uh, Tacoma Willis and Sister Elaine, they're teaching that class. It's a really great class, and it would be a blessing for you to be in that class. Those are all the observations that I have. Let us be mindful of those that are sick, shut in, recovered. Pray for them. Ask for God's help in their healing and their, their recovery process. And just also keep in mind, we got, uh, the, the, um, we've got our... Uh, new officers that are going to be getting installed on the first uh, Sunday in October at the 1045 services. And then also in September, we have, I mean in September, but in November, the first Sunday in November is our Harvest uh, Day program. And that's uh, at 4 o'clock, Harvest Day program at 4 o'clock in, uh, in November. And um, we, we, we're pretty sure we're, we're going to work out the 
the logistics. But um, uh, our guest church would be Cornelia uh, Church uh, over on Green Oaks. And uh, so uh, we're looking forward to, to that. Those are all our observations. Let us stand and sing our altar song, Pass Me Not. Oh! 
to the altar in prayer this morning. Oh Lord God, thank you for allowing us to wake up this morning. Thank you for giving us power in our feet and in our hands. Thank you, Lord, for allowing our mouths to move. There were many that had the intention of getting up this morning, Lord. And they turned and cleaved to the roof of their mouth. And you call us so home from labor to rewards. Lord, we want to stay on the battlefield for you a little while longer. We want to practice singing and praying and praising. We want to lift up the name of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Father, for all that you have done. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing right now. And we know you're a God of promise, so we thank you for what you're going to do in our future. Father, you're too high to go over, and you're too low and too deep to go under. Lord, we can't do anything but come to you straight. We ask you, Father, right now, in the counsel of your children, to pardon us for all our sins. Forgive us for the wrong that we might have done knowingly or unknowingly. We want to thank you, Father, for your mercy, for your favor, and for your grace. We thank you, Father, that we have the ability right now to lift you up. We thank you, Lord, for putting your ever-loving arms around us, for putting us in your care, for showing us how much you loved us, even when we didn't love ourselves. We know, Father, you've been better than a father or a mother. You've been better than a sister or a brother, and you've been closer than the closest friend. We thank you for your mercy, Father. We know you're just too good. If we had a thousand tongues this morning, Father, we couldn't thank you enough for all that you have done for us. Father, when we consider where we've been, when we consider how you've brought us out and brought us over, we can't say anything but thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Because you're worthy to be praised. And we thank you for having a reasonable portion of health and strength, for wrapping us and clothing us in our righteous mind, for sitting us about and on our day's journey. We thank you this morning, Father, for all the small things and all the great things that you have done in our life. We ask you to bless us and keep us near to you. Keep your hand over our pastor, the shepherd, who feeds your sheep righteously. Bless him and lift him up. Protect his family, his children, and protect the work by his hands. Father, we ask you that if it be anything in us that ought not or should not be, we ask that you replace it with a loving and a kind spirit. Sit us about our journey of spreading the word of Jesus Christ, the salvation to all men, and to all countries and all areas. Be with our men and women in uniform, the ones that are overseas and the ones right here in our country. Protect our citizens. Keep a hedge of protection around your Christian children. Father, I ask you right now that if you find favor in us, and, and we have done all that God has required of us to do, when our journey is complete, Father, we're not asking for the mansion, we're just asking for a room. Have a place for us in your kingdom where we won't have to worry about lying. We won't have to worry about backbiting and gossiping. We won't have to worry about sickness, sorrow, and pain. We won't have to worry about taking any medication for any headaches because it won't be none of that on the other side. We ask your Father, if you find favor in us, all we desire to hear at the end is well done, thy good and thy faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things. I now make you ruler over many. And all your children said, Amen.
Let us bow and pray. Merciful and loving God, we come now seeking to hear a word from on high. Asking, O oh God, you let thy spirit fall on us. The heaven eyes might see, heaven ears might hear, heaven a heart we might perceive with us, saith the Lord. And be healed and strengthened in this walk that we call life. In Jesus' blessed name we pray. Amen. If we will look at Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 through 8. The topic of our text today is the way you pray. The way you pray. From the wherein to the words of to the warmed with. The way you pray. The way you pray. In verses 5 through 6, it talks about the where. Matthew chapter 6, verses 5 and 6. Where the writer says, And when you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand. They love to pray standing in the synagogue on the corners of the street that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. But when, but you, when you pray, go into your room and when you have shut the door, pray to your heavenly Father Pray to your Father who is in the secret place. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. And your Father who sees in secret will reward you openly. You may be seated. A time to pray. The way in, the way that you pray. A lot of folks pray in different ways. Some folks pray silently. Some folks pray aloud. Some folks pray for others. Some folks pray for themselves. 
the way you pray in a time to pray. From the public front to the private affair. Looking at these scriptures, the Apostle Matthew, he, he, he gives us a redefinition on the rules of engagement in, within the human heart. What shouldn't have been, it was. And what ought not to have been, what should have been, it wasn't. And what ought to have been, it wasn't. Through his own words, Christ Jesus excites and enlightens us as he redefined the standards on how we should live. You know, this is the same place in the Bible where it talks about blessed are the merciful for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. The same place where Jesus said, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill that cannot be here. The, the, the same place where he says in substance that before your actions tell on you, tell on you visibly, our hearts will tell the story and that before the Almighty. In anger, jealousy, envy, immorality, and broken marriages, before you get to the courthouse or the jailhouse, that God will have already judged your human heart. In a redefinition and a reorientation, Jesus says, no more, no more, no more. No more shall it be an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. On the contrary and in human contradiction. Jesus says, love your enemies. Bless those that curse you. Pray for those that spitefully use and persecute you. Redefining the way that we think, the way that we act, the way that we talk. And it all begins with the way that you pray. Redefining what had become a public front back to the original, the original intent of a private affair. C.S. Lewis wrote once, I pray because I can't help myself. I pray because I'm helpless. I pray because, I, because the need flows out of me all the time. Waking and sleeping. It doesn't change God. It changes me. That's why I pray. A public affront. You know, when we pray, individually, personally, it is supposed to be about privacy. Yeah. That, that innermost prayer yeah. Yeah. That, that you have. It, it should be about privacy. Yeah. Like, like this lady that um, was leaving work. She got a call from the babysitter. Said, your baby's sick. You need to bring some medicine home. Ain't nothing in the, med in, in the, in the medicine cabinet. And so she stopped by the drugstore and, and ran in to get some medication for her little girl. And then came back out, got the medication, came back out and realized she had locked the keys in the car. And she's trying to get home because the babysitter and said, the baby's sick. And she got the medicine but can't get in her car. And she's upset and she's frustrated and she prays, Lord, send me some help so I can get home and, and get the medication to my little girl. About that old time, an um, old boy drove up on the motorcycle, had on a dusty, dirty old leather jacket, two tooth missing in the front, 
stepped off the motorcycle, bent down on his head. He looked at the woman crying and said, man, what's wrong with you? She said, I don't lock my keys in my car. The babysitter said, talking about getting some kind of coat hanging. I don't know how to do all that. And she said, I got to get home to get the medication to my daughter. She didn't want to talk to him, but she didn't have no choice. And the guy said, well, step aside. Went over to a car and inside of about 30 seconds, he was in the car. There you go. She said, sir, thank you so much. You're such a nice man. And the guy said, nah. He said, ma'am, I, I just got out of prison for burglary and robbery. She threw her arms around her neck and said, the Lord sent me a professional. <laughs> Sometimes we don't see it in the way that we pray. But see, God sends us what we need. What, what, what the Lord condemned right here in prayer it is that it, it become all about the public show. Folks wanting to be seen dying for human attention. It amazes me what people would do for the spotlight. If it ain't but for three or four minutes to the point that 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 they got to the point where they were misusing prayer. You know, prayer is important. I'm going to say that again. Prayer is important. And at some point along the way, life is going to teach you how to pray. Matter of fact, that I, I look around our nation. You know, I had put the, put the cruise control on. I was getting ready to coast into the sunset. We had dealt with the 60s, dealt with the 70s, dealt with the 80s and the 90s, thought we had put all that foolishness behind us with Ronald Reagan, and then these folks elected Donald Trump. And I had to go back to praying. <laughs> As we look around our nation, it will remind us that praying days are not over. When we got to define that look, marriage is between a man and a woman. That's what the Lord said. That lets us know that praying days are not over. When gas is cheap and we still can't afford to put it in the car, it lets us know that praying days are not over. And when folks from Washington to Austin can, legit, can legitimately say that the boy living at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue is unfit and immoral. Mama said, don't call people by name, so I just use the Bible. It says he's a reprobate. He's still there. Praying days are not over. And it would do us well to remember the words of Big Mama. Pray on, child. Pray on. God will fix it after a while. Jesus didn't say if you pray. He said when you pray. When you pray. Prayer was important to the Jew. It ought to be important to you. Psalm 119 says, and 10 says, with my whole heart I have sought you. Oh let, oh, oh, let me not wander from your commandment. Your word have I hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalms 119 and 34. Give me understanding, and I will keep your law. Indeed, I will observe it with my whole heart. Make me walk in the path of your commandments, for I delight in it. Psalms 119 and 59. I thought about my ways and turned my feet to your testimony. I made haste and did not delay to keep your commandments. 145 says, I cried out with my whole heart. Hear me, O Lord. I will keep, I will keep your statutes. I will cry out to you. Save me and I will keep your commandments. And then Psalm 138 and 3 says, In the day that I cried out, you answered me 
and made me bold with strength in my soul. Prayer was important to the Jews and I hope that it's important to you. It should be. If we love the Lord like we say that we love the Lord. Paul said, you ain't got to fake it till you make it. Just pray it like you mean it. And then pray without ceasing. Pray when you're suffering and pray when you're rejoicing. Pray in the good times and pray in the hard times. Pray in season and pray out of season. And in all things with thanksgiving in your heart unto God. Prayer is important. And if you love the Lord, you're going to pray. That's just the way it is. The problem is and has always existed the temptation to make prayer a public front. The hypocrites and the un and unholy looking for a show. Them folks that wanted recognition driven by their desire for public attention. With the Jew, there wasn't no such thing as separation of church and state. Religion and politics to them is one and the same. Matter of fact, they were supposed to pray three times a day. Nine o'clock in the morning, twelve in the noonday, then round about 3 p.m. in the afternoon. Moving up the political ladder meant climbing the religious stairway to demonstrate their political, moral, and spiritual superiority. Uh, some of these folks, they would make prayer to a public show, saying, look at me, watch me pray. I know how to call on the name of the Lord. Watch me as I fix it up and spell it out all the time, standing outstretched hand. That was their custom. That's the way they did it. Then just to show that, make sure that they were seen, they used up to a busy street corner round about time that they were supposed to pray. And then they made sure that they were in that busiest part of town, around 9 o'clock or 12 or 3 in the afternoon, looking for the attention and the approval from folks that were on the go. And what the Lord said is that's exactly what they got. They got the approval of folks and nothing from God. The way the Lord saw it, what you were looking for was the approval of people. You weren't talking to him. And as such, he didn't bother to listen to them. Didn't bother to hear their phony cry. Didn't bother to listen to their fake supplication. These religious street corner hustlers, they got their reward. A cheap feel, cheap thrill, and a poor exchange. They sought the approval of people, and that's what they got. During this one uh, lunch hour with the president of this factory, he um, went to see one of the main guys, uh, the supervisor, manager of the production department. As he walked into the office, came down from his, his big office, walked into the, the office. The, the guy had a secretary. He said, well, uh, he's, he's, got a, he's got a teleconference every day about this time. And the president said, well, who's he talking to? He said, the secretary said, I'm not sure, but every day he's got a, tele, he's got a conference at this time, and he can't be bothered. And, and the president looked at him, do you know who I am? He said, you better get out of here and let me open this door. And so she stepped aside. He opened the door and stepped in. Then he eased back out. And he closed the door quietly. He looked at the secretary and said, now he had this conference every day. She said, every day? At this same time? The same time. For how long? She said, for half an hour. He said, all right. Tell him to give me a call when he finished. So he had walked in. And the guy had his Bible on his desk. And he was reading and praying. And so he realized that what he was doing was more important to the company than any kind of meeting that he needed to have with him at that moment. 
fickle human approval, which is here today and gone tomorrow, is a poor exchange. You know, I don't, the folks that I work for, I do work for, I do a good job. I don't do a good job to impress anybody. I do it because they pay me. And the Lord says that if you're going to take their money, you ought to give them a pretty good product. If you got a woman, then you ought to be the best man she's ever met. Not because of her sweetness, but because of God's goodness. See, no matter how sweet she is right now, one week out of a month, she's going to make you pray. And you ain't, <laughs> ain't going to be able to do nothing right. Sisters, you ought to wake up with the Lord in your heart and your man on your mind. What will bring him joy? Not because he's so perfect, but because you got a perfect Savior. Matter of fact, the more desirable you strive to be for the Lord, the more your own man won't be able to get enough of your love. The trick is, it's got to be for the Lord and not just for show. It's called the benefits of private prayer. A private affair, the, the, the way that prayer was meant to be. A personal relationship, a, a private matter of the heart between, between you and God, not other folks. We don't, need, we don't need other folks' approval. And in the end, we ought not to be seeking their praise. You know, there's a story about the, 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 the president of Anheuser Bush. And in some kind of way, this cat got the phone number to the, to the Pope. And, and, and he called the Pope up, and he's talking to him, and he, and he tells the Pope that, look here, if you would just change that part in the, the Lord's Prayer about give us this day, make it, give us this day our daily bill. Pope said, I can't do that. He said, I'll give you $10 million dollars. If you would just let the Catholics know. It's all right to say, give us this day. Y'all drink anyway. Give us this day our daily beer. He's the Pope said, I can't do it. He said, all right, I'll give you $50 million. It's a business deal. If you just say, forget the bread part. Say, give us this day our daily beer. Pope said, I'm sorry, I can't do it. Guys, look at this. My final offer. I'll give you $100 million. And how's your bush? $100 million. If you would just say, just change it. Give us today our daily beer. Pope looked at him, picked up the phone, called the cardinal, and said, How solid is that deal we got with Pillsbury? <laughs> I thought it was funny. Real proud. It's about petition for God's help. Or maybe. It's about praise for God's goodness. All of his manifold benefits. Real prayer. It is either an approval of or an appointment with the grace of God. God who doesn't have to hear us when we pray. Now we can pray all day. There's no rule or law that says God's got to hear us when we pray. If he listens, it's because he decides to, not because he's got to. When we pray, he listens, he sees, and the reason is because we got it like that. The sinner unredeemed, they can pray all day. They can, they can call on the name of the Lord. They can, but the only thing that the Lord hears is when they say, Lord, save me. Even me, save me. All that other stuff, God ain't trying to hear all that. Now, he may bless them. Don't get me wrong. But it ain't because they ask. It's because 
it, he blesses the just and the unjust. It, it rains on the righteous and the unrighteous. The, the, the fact that the son of praise has got nothing to do with the blessing that he gets. But the child of God, us on the other hand, when we pray, he hears us. Your thoughts, your pains, your highs, your lows, your disappointments, your, your hopes and dreams, God. He listens intently to it all. And he never gets tired that he doesn't listen to even more. Because, because we got it like that. And we got it like that because Jesus loved us that much that he paid the price. And he carried our burdens, endured our shame, paid for our iniquity. And on Calvary's cross, he paid the way for us to come back to God. You know God, he doesn't have to consider the thoughts of our mind. But his loving kindness, his personal interest in our limited human life, he sees our secret petition, and then from his storehouse, he pours out blessings heaped on blessings. And then in, in verse 7, the writer said, And when you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. For they think that they will be heard for their many words. When you pray the words of humility and of sincerity, in humility, in humility Christ calls on us to be sincere. Don't be like the ungodly who don't know a thing about the Lord and the pardon of their sin. You can say it over and over all you want to. Like God is hard of hearing. Or just slow of foot to answer our call. That he somehow might be badgered and, and battered into giving us the desires of our thoughts. E even if our thoughts were unreasonable or irrational. Like, like some kind of way that an all-knowing God has to be informed by our intelligence, which in and of itself is the natural sinful end of the human mind. Real prayer, personal prayer, though it may require quality time, it doesn't take a whole lot of word. I said real quality prayer doesn't take a whole lot of word. God is not in the business of being informed by us. What he wants is to be owned by us. Elijah on Mount Carmel, showdown between the false prophets of Baal, hadn't reigned for a while. And the prophets of Baal, they're talking about Jehovah like he's a nobody. So that Elijah set up the challenge and he didn't use a whole lot of words. God doesn't need to be informed by us, just owned by us. God is not in the business of being informed by us, but rather owned by us. Owned by us that he is God and God alone. Owned by us that he is our one and only supply and source. Owned by us that he alone is our shelter from the storms of life owned by us that he is a very present help in a time of need a realization and an affirmation that God is our all in all a realization some would say but now brother preacher I have gone through some times in my life when I, I just couldn't feel it and I can respond I can feel you but I've learned to pray anyway See, I believe, I have to believe, I can't do nothing but believe, I must believe. I just won't let the devil take my faith away. And you know it doesn't take a whole lot of words in private prayer to say, Lord, I love you, Lord, I need you, Lord, I'll serve you with my whole heart. 
Lord, I praise you all the days of this fragile life. Lord, if you need somebody, here am I, send me. Here am I, send me. I'm not all that much, but all that I am, I give unto thee. Make me an instrument of thy peace. Use me, O oh God, until you use me up. Not many words, but they get the message across. In the end, it's on God, his interpretation, and then the application to the intent of our life. The Holy Ghost making intercession in an explanation. We may not know how we ought to pray, but at least we know that we ought to pray. And in prayer, the Holy Ghost, I promise you, he'll help you. You may not know what you ought to say, but if you trust in God, uh, the Holy Ghost will come along beside you, uh, and he'll say, he'll give the Father the meaning of the word that you pray, and then fix them up so that he gets the meaning of what you were trying to say. The warmth, the warmth, in verse 8, the, the writer says, uh, Therefore, do not be like them, uh, for your Father, he knows the thing that you have need of uh, before you ask him. Uh, your Father, he knows what you got need of before you ask him, uh, the way that you pray. The never forgetting uh, to the tenderness of the Lord, uh, the, the warmth of God, uh, his love and care for his children. Uh, he loves us, uh, Jesus says, uh, that you say to him, uh, for your father knows the thing that you got need of, uh, the warmth of God uh, for us, his children. Uh, he loves us uh, like a father uh, because uh, we are his very own. Uh, I like the way that the Lord said it. Uh, he didn't say, uh, when you pray to him, uh, like he's your father. He said, pray to your father. He knows uh, what we need, uh, not because we told him, uh, but because uh, we even asked. Uh, before we even asked, uh, he knew what we had need of. Uh, you know, it's really very elementary, uh, uh, but, but, but I like it anyhow. Uh, it's sort of like that song, uh, Yes, Jesus loved me. Uh, for the Bible tells me so. Uh, little ones uh, to him belong. Uh, we are weak, uh, but he is strong. Uh, Jesus loves me. Uh, he who died, uh, heaven gates uh, to open wide. Uh, he who washed uh, away my sins. Uh, to let a little child come in. Uh, yes, God, uh, our Father, he knows uh, what we have need. Uh, not because uh, we tell him uh, and before we ask him. Uh, I'm so glad uh, I can go uh, to the throne of grace uh, to find the help uh, that I need uh, in a time of trouble. Uh, I don't know about you, uh, but I've seen uh, the lightning flash. Uh, I've heard uh, the thunder roll. Uh, I've felt uh, sin, sin breaker dash uh, trying uh, to conquer my soul. Uh, but in a time of trouble, uh, I remember where my help comes from. Uh, in a time of trials, uh, I call on the Lord. Uh, somewhere I read uh, where the writer said, uh, therefore run with endurance uh, the race uh, that is set before you. Uh, look into Jesus, uh, the author and the finisher of our faith, uh, who for the joy uh, that was set before him uh, endured the cross uh, despising the shame uh, and is now set down uh, at the right hand uh, of the Father, uh, talking to the Father about you and me. Uh, when we cry, uh, he's talking to the Father when we're hurting, uh, he's talking to the Father. When we need success, uh, he's talking to the Father. I know the Lord uh, will work it out uh, because, the, because my Savior is at the right side uh, making intercession, uh, not sometimes, uh, but all the time. Uh, all the time, uh, he cares about me. Uh, all the time, uh, he's looking at me. Uh, all the time, uh, 
He knows uh, what I need uh, and what you need all the time. When you pray, know that there is help on the way. When you pray, know that God is not still, but he's working on your behalf through purpose, through a plan that is God for you in ways that you don't know. But he's working toward that success that you want. That prosperity that you need. That healing that seems evasive. That he's working to bring it to pass. And in his own time and in that place where your greatest good, God will, because he's a God like that. And we got a Savior like that. That's Christ Jesus. Don't ever forget that. That's who he is for you and me. The way you pray. The doors of the church open. And it's your time. It says, if you pray, Father, I'm a sinner. He hears. And if you pray, I believe on Christ. His death, burial, and resurrection. And that it was for me. That he hears you. He forgives. And then he calls you his own. The doors of the church are open. I can't think of any greater testimony than that. To say that he calls you his own. Why not come today? There's a good day. Come to the Lord. There's a good day. Know him, who he is, because he always knows you, who you are. And then he accepts you, just like that. He got plans for you, great plans for you, but he accepts you, just like that. It's your time now. Doors of the church of God. You should come today. You should come today. The chair is for you. We want you to come. We want you to come. Yes, yes. your time now. Doors of the church open. You should come today. We want you to come. Yes, yes. It's your time now. It's your time. Yes. Call in your name. Call in your name. Oh, 
We're thankful for the word that was given today. We're thankful for this offering, uh, what has been given and what has been received. And Father, we're thankful for the opportunity to use it to expand the work that you're doing through the church of body of Christ. It is in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. To all of our visitors, we're happy you share with us on this Lord's Day. We hope and pray you'll come again at 8 or at 1045 love to see you come by also please keep in mind right after the benediction we got our um uh we got our um bible institute and so if there's great classes please uh take and make a think about it. uh stand for class you'll be blessed by it you'll be blessed by it now one last thing
you know, last week, um, a couple weeks ago, one of them, the the deacons, <coughs> was counting money, and uh, they they brought me this hundred dollar bill, and uh, I said, "Bless you, brother," <laughs> and uh, they said, "No, take a good look at the pastor," and you know, it looks good, it looks good, but you know, these guys they work with the post office, they see money all the time. And um, it, it's real clear to them that, you know, this was made on a really good printing machine that you buy from Fry's Electronics or Best Buy. And you know, I thought about it and I prayed about it. And I thought, you know, I could take this down to the authorities. And to be honest with you, you know, the, the, when I took it over to the bank, and I said, look, I want you to take a look at this. And one of the vice presidents, they actually go to church and say, hey, it looks good, Pastor. I said, take a close look at it. And she said, uh, no, you're right. It's not a rest. No. I thought about it, and I, you know, I took it to the authorities. Look, I'm going to the authorities, and I prayed about it. And the um, Lord said, no, just handle it within the village. This is a bad idea. It's a bad idea. And and you you should quit it, all right? Before you get yourself into some real trouble. So just just stop it. You know, let's just call it good at that. Let's stand for the benediction. into his marvelous light. May the grace of God, sweet communion of the Holy Spirit, rest rule and abide each and every one of us. Let us all say, Amen.